Good morning or good day, Algebra 2, whenever you are watching this video. Um, as promised, uh, I'm making a little video here. Yesterday we left um, a little too quickly for my taste. Um, we tried to rush in how to factor uh, when the A value is not 1, so I promised you a video. So here's the video. Why don't you first get out the notes we were taking yesterday. I'll help you do one of the problems on the front side, which was grouping, which was perfect because that's what we're going to use to actually factor something where A isn't 1. So I'll get this out, you get yours out, and meet me back over here. Ready, go. Here's what it should look like. You had um, notes up here. We, we filled that thing up with notes on grouping. Some of you may have already done these. If so, that's awesome. If not, here you go. Here's a chance to get some free ones. Um, I'm going to look at number four first. This will be the only one we practice. But the method is called factoring by grouping. Whenever there are four terms, this is something we can try and see if it works. We should still always try GCF first. I'm looking at these things. There's nothing they all have in common. Um, it doesn't look like a holy grail method problem. Definitely not square root property problem. Okay, four terms is telling me to group these together. So I'm going to group the first two together, and I'm going to group the second two together. Awesome. From here, it's GCF with each group. Okay, well, this is pretty easy. I'm looking at these two. What do they have in common? It's an X. So I'm going to take an X to the outside of some parentheses. Um, I'm doing that using division. So I'm taking an x off by dividing. We're not subtracting x's off. We're dividing x's off. So x squared, and if I divide off an x, I have an x. A negative 3x, and if I divide off an x, I get negative 3. GCF, just with that little group. Now the next one, 7 and 21, that's a touchdown. 7. So I know they both have a positive 7 in common. So I'm going to take a positive 7 to the outside of the parentheses. I'm doing that with division. So 7x divided by 7, just leave me with an x. Negative 21 divided by 7 is a negative 3. Awesome. Now because these two things, these two factors match, that is one of the factors in my answer. That's minus 3. The other factor comes from the stuff that we GCF'd out front, the x and the plus 7. So I put x plus 7, and we're good. That is factoring using grouping x plus 7, x minus 3, go through and tackle those other five. That one we were good at. This one on the other side, we didn't quite finish, or we did, but it was kind of hasty. So um, I made up a new problem for us to do these notes, and you can write down little helpers on what you think will matter to you, but um, I'm going to go through this problem. Uh, the main idea was we want to turn this into a grouping problem by changing the middle term into two other terms. Right? If I change this one into two different ones, I would have one, two, three, four terms, and we can do grouping. But how we choose this, like how we find those two terms, that's, that's the tricky bit. Okay, so the rule will be, I'm going to change this into two separate terms. I want two numbers, my two magical numbers, have to multiply and give me negative, multiply, sorry, and multiply and give us a negative 60. And then the two no, same two numbers that you pick over here, they're going to multiply and give us negative 60, have to add, so I'm putting little helpers here to remind us, and get us negative 11. Okay, multiply to negative 60, add to negative 11, go find the numbers. Well, that's not always that easy. So um, a method we can use to do this when the numbers aren't apparent to us is to just list out all the numbers that multiply to 60. So I'm going to start with the two easiest ones I know, and that's 60 and 1. 60 times 1, those will definitely multiply to 60. Um, will they add to negative 11? No. There's no combinations of positives and negatives that I'm going to get to be uh, negative 11. By the way, if they're multiplying to negative 60, that means one of them has to be negative. we got to keep that in the, the back of our mind as we're going through this. Next, let's try 2. How about 30 and 2? Um, nope, I can't get that to be 11. That'll multiply to 60. That'll do that job, but it won't add to 11. Let's try 3. 20 and 3. Mm. Nope, can't get to 11. That'll get me to 17, but that won't get me to 11. Uh, the next one is 4. Okay, I get my calculator. I do 60 divided by 4, and I would get 15. Um, oh, okay, that's going to do it. To get to be a negative 60, one of these has to be a negative. And to add and get to negative 11, one of them is negative. That's going to work for us. Okay, If they're going to add and get me to negative 11, the bigger of these two numbers has to keep that sign, has to actually be the negative one. So we found our two numbers. Ding, 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 ding. Now we're going to have to go back and actually do the replacement. I'm replacing negative 11x with 15x, negative 15x, by the way, negative 15x, and positive 4x. So 
Uh, I'm going to rewrite the whole thing. 6x squared minus 15x plus 4x minus 10. There we go. That, that was, that's the new stuff. That's it. The new stuff. Find two numbers that multiply to this one, negative 60, and add to this one. Replace that middle term with two of those two numbers you just found. And let's check it real quick. Negative 15x's plus 4x's, that's negative 11x's. I haven't broken any math rules. I'm just being smart about how I'm breaking these things up. Now, it's, it's a grouping problem, right? One, two, three, four problems. Four terms. I'm going to group these two together, and I'm going to group these two together. And then I'm going to GCF each one. So let's see. Between these, they both don't have a 2. They both have a 3, though. 3 times 2, 3 times 5. So I'm going to take a 3, and they both have an x. So I'll take that out, 3x. That'll leave me with 2x minus 5. These two are both even, so they both have a 2 in common. And that'll give me a 2x minus 5. Awesome. Again, since these match, that's one of my answers. 2x minus 5. The other answer comes from the stuff that we GCF'd off. 3x and a positive 2. 3x and a positive 2. Okay? If we ever wanted to check this, we would just have to do the distributive property twice. 3x times 2x. 6x squared. 3x times negative 5. Negative 15x. 2 times 2x, positive 4x. 2 times negative 5, negative 10. And it is. It's the exact same thing we got when we did our special little substitution. So we're good. That is factored form. That's intercept form for this trinomial. Um, if I asked you for the x-intercepts, we would still have to go finish the problem and set these equal to 0. But if it just says factor, we're done. Okay? Um, I'm going to leave those four for you then. Get after it. Bring your questions with you on Monday. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Friday. Get your missing work turned in. Um, I want you guys passing. I don't want to saddle you guys with an F for the first marking period. Get your work handled. Uh, peace. Enjoy your day.